All right, so for my um, project, I try to make a temperature and humidity monitoring system for the lab that we have on the fifth floor. And just so you see what kind of it looks like, that's just a uh, screenshot of this little display here. I wrapped it for Christmas. It's Christmas themed. But what's shown is the temperature and humidity readout. So I'm just monitoring what we had in my house. Yes, so I just uh, see that it works as of yesterday. So hopefully it works today. The uh, problem that most experimentalists have, especially in our lab, is that the shearing experiments, if they're outside of a pressure vessel of some sort, they are, they are exposed to the ambient pressure or ambient conditions in the room, which can ultimately control the stability of your sample. And a great example of that is relative humidity. This is uh, Brian Ryan, who showed that the relative humidity can actually influence the stability and frictional healing of a gas air. In this case, it's a uh, coarse powder. What this plot is showing is with low relative humidity, you have little to no healing. And as you increase the relative humidity to completely saturate it, you get larger and larger peaks, which are larger healings. And it's not shown on this plot, but they actually had some um, velocity dependence on humidity as well. It showed that with higher humidities, you can have um, transition of velocity weakening behavior from stable to potentially unstable behavior or just velocity weakening behavior. So that's kind of the main main thing is try to monitor that so that you try to get consistent humidity when you want to run your experiments. If you don't want to change some more factors in your experiments. So the uh, experimentation I have is just the similar or the same sensor that Peter used. It's the uh, um, atmospheric sensor breakout and it's shown right there. It's really, it's really, really simple to use. You have um, the, four, the four pins on the left or the six on the right so you never have to use one of the six. So it's a really simple setup. And they can control temperature and humidity. Or can, they can monitor the temperature and humidity, the relative humidity, pressure, and altitude all at once. So it's a really pretty cool little device. The, uh, the ranges are also shown here. We have the temperature ranging from negative 40 to 85 degrees C. So it's a pretty big range. You have full sweep of uh, humidity, pressures of sea ground, atmospheres, and altitudes, or elevations to around nine kilometers. So it's pretty, pretty long distance you can get there. This is kind of a schematic of my uh, circuit. I use the uh, printing app that is all available on smartphones. It's really cool, easy thing to use so you can remember what you did. So I had the uh, Arduino Uno that's hooked up to an LCD screen and the, the sensor itself. And I also have the, an open log um, instrument here. I didn't get it to work, but it should be simple to implement because all you have to do is connect to the ground to the power and to have the transmitter and connect to the receiver pin of the data locker system, but I couldn't get it to work. There's a lot of seeking errors in my, in my program, I guess. So I guess it's a user error on my part. But nonetheless, we also have um, some LED lights here, the green and yellow and green. It's just so when you upload the code, it turns solid green. If it's uploaded successfully, it works. And the yellow is a blinking LED that corresponds to how often you're getting your data. So each blink is a data point, essentially. And the last thing I have on here is just a, uh, a push button where you can change the LCD display from humidity temperature to altitude pressure if you wanted that, that data. All right, so I wanted to do a, a quick demonstration, see if it still works. I'm gonna hook it up my computer real fast, but since I couldn't get the data logger to work, I ended up using the software that John pointed me towards, which was CoolTurn, and it's a, you can connect that to your serial port and actually tell it to write a text file of whatever the uh, sensor is recording. So you can, it's a pretty easy way to get your data that you want to, to plot it all up. Everything's just inside, and then I just kind of go to the next thing and see all the unplugged wiring, but it's 
flashing every one second and it says, ah, did you get in the data? And push button down here can actually get it so you change the screen, you get altitude and pressure, the altitude looks like it's off by a, a few hundred meters. So I have to go back and see what's up with that, but nonetheless, it's simple and it works. And if you wanted to see the uh, tool chart software, you can get your Why to get the uh, local software? This is the software you just go ahead and go to options and go to. Should be going to a port here, but I don't see it there. But anyway, you would connect it to a port and then you would just go tell it to write to a data file and then you can start doing it. Not sure why. It's like a sketchy website, but it's fine. All right, <laughs> just trust me. <laughs> so here's a uh, some data that I recorded yesterday. It's about an hour. It's uh, just in my house. I kind of put it stuck in the freezer for a long time. And I took it down and put it in front of, front of my oven. So I didn't put it in the oven. I put it in front. <laughs> so you see the temperature's going down. Good. That means the sensor is working. The freezer is not broken. That little blip is just when I open. Took it out and went to the freezer, and I tried to clean it up because I was afraid that condensation would build up inside the box if I brought it, like heated it up. So I was trying to fix it, and I thought that's just okay. But you still see the uh, temperature chart it increased pretty drastically. So that's good. Right side is just the same time window, and it's just the humidity. <coughs> Seems to make sense if when you you think about think about relative humidity, you have the cool air should hold less water. So if you warm up the system, then potentially you should have higher high humidities, and that's what you see here. Or that could just be the uh, condensation being built up in the side of the box instead of heating it up. But either way, it seems like a proof of concept. It's pretty cool. Challenges, yeah. So I had run into similar challenges to Peter and into as far as not getting it on the Wi-Fi and the internet. But I also couldn't get the data log to work, which was unfortunate. So yeah, the uh, another problem was killing me. I wanted to get all these parts to talk to each other to work. I can get them to work separately, I just couldn't get them together, which was really unfortunate. But there's a little comment of how I look like Kevin. <laughs> but yeah, those are some challenges and implementation. Because of these challenges, I have some limitations where I have to be here and actively messing with the uh, with the cool term software that I can get my data to actually go. And it's fixed the computer through the uh, USB cable. And I put it more available for Android users because it's not completely waterproof. And you could bring it outside, you just gotta carry all your laptop and everything out there. And it's kind of, kind of a hassle. So, what I would want to do later on is try to get these pieces to work with it. So, on the top left is the local log. You can put a um, SD card in the back of it, and you can just write some data to that on the SD card so you can get that data later. And if you want to implement the Spark Fun thing, which is on the right, the long piece, it's, um, it's a cool little device because you can actually get it to go on the internet and upload data to their data Spark Fun server. Or you can make your own server and have other devices talk to it. I was able to get my, my phone, for instance, to just blink the LEDs and turn it on and off and stuff like that. And just the uh, SDK I did is just to program the thing. If or when I'm able to get the Wi-Fi to work, I want to have it automatic upload the plotting sensor data on some 
what sense it is, can actually look at it in a real time, not having to pull it off yourself and try to plot it all up. And also, I like to do diary power, so when you have to, I also have it limited by being next to my computer so I can just drop the yield anywhere I want. So that's where I'm at right now, and if you have any questions. <laughs> I remember when I was looking at the bottom, it was telling me what was connected and what wasn't. Okay, awesome. Any other questions? 